Roses are red. Bitcoin is green. XLM is light green. And Ethereum, forest green. Ah, the green. I never thought I'd see you again. But how long will this green last? How long will this bullish trend continue? Well, it might delight you, my FUD Nation viewers, to know that I have developed a precise model for predicting exactly where this market will go. I hear you doubting me. I hear it inside. Just know it's real. And I'll be revealing it at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. First, before we get into the news, I have to let you know that I will be speaking on a panel at the Litecoin Summit on day two of the Litecoin Summit, which is tomorrow, as well as I'll be hanging out there both days. I'll also be at Block World. If you want to come check it out, come say hello. I'm going to have some discount codes in the description of this video if you want to attend. There will be some cheap tickets. I don't know. There might even be some free tickets. Of course, it would delight me to see as many of you FUD Nationers as possible. Back to the episode. First and foremost, with the Winklevi creating a competitor to Tether. That's right, the Gemini dollar, which is going to be audited by third parties and backed one-to-one -one by US dollars in the way that everyone really hopes USD Tether is backed, has been approved and will be launching on the Gemini exchange. Now, a lot of people keep asking, what is really the point of this? You can actually trade US dollars on the Gemini exchange, so why would you want a stable coin? And actually, where I think stable coins are going to have the biggest impact is when we start moving into a world where we've tokenized other assets beyond cryptocurrencies. Obviously, for some people like Canadians and other people, trading crypto to crypto doesn't incur a taxation event, a taxable event. Therefore, maybe it makes sense if you're in certain jurisdictions where a crypto to crypto trade sort of falls under the 1031 or a like kind exchange. That could make sense as to why you'd prefer to trade in crypto to crypto as opposed to USD to crypto. Regardless, I could also see how in the future, in the very near future, stable coins will become quite the backbone of a modern economy. Not everyone lusts for a volatile currency. In fact, very few people throughout their daily goings on want to see their business fluctuate by 20%. Obviously, they want to see it fluctuate 20, 30% in the upward direction, but very few people and business owners actually have the stomach for seeing their transactions be thrown off 20, 30, 40% in the negative direction. For that reason, I do believe that it will become quite popular, especially once you're already in the crypto sphere, once you do smart contracts, once you have tokenized real world assets where you're gonna be paying dividends, paying monthly profits, you're going to need a better mechanism for transferring bits of money. Sure, you could say just use Bitcoin, but again, Bitcoin is quite volatile. So wouldn't it be great if you could have that instantaneous borderless cash-like interaction with a completely stable currency. And that's when I think you're going to see the rise of stable coins really come into full blossom. Say you own a little piece of a hotel and you own that hotel and it's in Kathmandu, I don't know, somewhere exotic. Let's just say you're not going to be wanting to send a wire transfer or receive a wire transfer with all the fees. You're not really gonna want them to be writing you a check and getting it in the mail days or weeks later. What you're going to want is an instantaneous settlement and you're not really going to wanna see it go down by 50% a week after you receive that settlement. For that reason, a stable coin could become incredibly useful in this environment. For tokenized real estate, by the way, global real estate is worth almost $220 trillion as we covered in our last episode. I do believe that real estate is prime for disruption, especially on the financing aspect of it, which is quite illiquid. We can look to see these stable coins become extremely popular. I could see stable coins continuing to enter into the world here and continuing to have a force here. Piggybacking on everything I've just said about stable coins and tokenized real world assets, we come to the story of air swap inking a deal with a FINRA registered broker dealer named Propeller. This is a serious puzzle piece in bringing a ton of liquidity and a ton of business operations onto the blockchain in a way that totally makes sense for an industry that controls an ungodly amount of capital and also could truly benefit in a very systematic way from moving over to blockchain by creating more liquidity, by creating more premiums on liquidity. Let me just run you through how that would work. Let's just say I own a hotel and I get traditional investors to invest. Well, they're probably investing tens of millions of dollars into this project and they expect to get the very best most competitive rate for their equity investment however if you move over and you're investing maybe 20 
50, 100, $1,000 into this project, you probably don't have that bulk discount sort of leverage like people do when they do OTC trading. Well, you can imagine that us as sort of more market retail investors kind of have to take the market rate. So as you create a lower bar for investor interest, you can create a more active market, a bigger pool of investors creating more competition and likely creating a premium on real estate that has good value and good fundamentals. I could see real estate getting funded and then distributed in a tokenized way and those tokens creating a bit of a premium above what the original investors might have paid with tens of millions in investment they might make a 10 20 30 percent premium on their initial investment by getting more retail investment interest much in the way that we're seeing with cryptocurrencies you're getting the sort of bulk pre-sale investors with the vcs and then you get more of the retail interest later on and we take more of a premium that's what i could definitely see happening maybe not with quite as dramatic premiums as we're seeing in cryptocurrency obviously the volatility won't be there it'll be a lot more of a stable asset which just pays premiums and dividends each and every month or quarter or year depending on how the contracts are set up up. Regardless, you can see that the value of that asset would fluctuate only about as much as the real estate market, really, in theory. And I think you'll see a tremendous amount of investment interest in the real estate market that wasn't previously even possible when these tokenized securities make it over to the blockchain. And cryptocurrency stable coins like Gemini Dollar can be used for facilitating the sort of payments aspect of these cryptocurrencies. Now, Vitalik also clarified his comments about 1000x gains, saying what I actually said is that because large portions of the population have already heard of crypto, further growth in crypto in any sense must come from depth, i.e. actual usage, not bringing more attention. Obviously, let's be realistic, the entire world wealth is not going into cryptocurrency. Media, Vitalik is a pessimist. Guys, if you spin things this way, you're incentivizing people to act more like Justin Sun Tron. Whoa, first of all, let's unwind this whole statement. He said again that there's no room for 1000x gains. In my last video, I think I showed then yes, there is room for 1000x gains. And I do believe that over time, as these prove themselves out, it makes more sense, especially with the existence of stable coins. I wouldn't see why they wouldn't actually come to occupy a ton of wealth on that front as we're going to move away from traditional dollars and cents. I still think that looking at this, I still think that he can double down on this, but I disagree fundamentally. Feel free to voice yourselves in the comments. Then he goes and tries to say that if you don't believe this, then you're Justin Sun Tron. Justin Sun has been coming directly at Ethereum and the Ethereum technology and the capabilities and usually comparing himself directly to Ethereum whenever he does do PR for Tron. So I understand him feeling a little bit of a competitive sort of relationship with Justin. The reality is, is that how does this have anything to do with Justin Sun? Again, I like Vitalik, but here he's just showing his immaturity a little bit by sort of making these big sweeping statements and saying, well, if you judge me on that statement, then you must want people to act like Justin Sun, assuming that that's a negative anyway, when there's quite a lot of people who do respect Justin Sun in the space. Sure, not everybody, but there are a cadre of people, me included, who like what Justin Sun is doing. Anyway, moving swiftly on, we got word that Paris Saint-Germain, which is one of the biggest soccer teams or football clubs, depending on where you are in the world, PSG will be launching its own ICO in partnership with a company called Socios.com, which is based in Malta. Socios.com already has a relationship between Real Madrid and Barcelona, which are two of the biggest teams in the world. Paris Saint-Germain is another logical addition to that. We can see maybe Bayern Munich and some other big English teams being added after that, maybe Juventus. Obviously, these are all some of the the biggest football clubs in the world. This is very exciting. These will be called an FTO, a fan token offering, which will come with voting rights as well as exclusives and VIP status. So we can understand that creating these micro economies is certainly possible, especially when you're looking at celebrities or football clubs or different places where there is that sort of fan relationship. I see this becoming a huge trend. If you have a huge, massive Instagram, there's a chance that you could also create a massive token to create some kind of internal economy. Maybe that's not a a rule or a law but that's sort of how i think of it is if you can be a big community then you can create a big economy and most certainly there are ways that you know barcelona real madrid and paris saint germain can accept a token for things that would certainly have real world value 
Well, that's it for me. Just a brief news episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I'm going to be at Block World and speaking at the Litecoin Summit up in San Francisco this weekend. I'll put some discount links in the description of this video. Check it out. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm off right now to catch my flight. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, I'm Elio Trades. You're watching FUD TV, and I'll see you very, very soon on the next episode.